Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha! Hello everyone, I hope you are doing good. In this video we're gonna practice Taekwondo shadow sparring, which is so important and I do practice it a lot on my trainings. I will tell you a few reasons why you also have to practice it. But first, for those who don't know me yet, my name is Jawel Ashab and I'm a professional Taekwondo athlete. Welcome! So why shadow sparring it is so important to practice? First reason, visualization. It is so important when you practice shadow sparring, you can visualize, for example, a few things. You can visualize your opponent in front of you and you fight him, for example. You can visualize, for example, the arena where you are competing at. You can visualize the spectator shouting, for example. So it is so important to visualize in the practice, like this, when you go to the competition, you, you will have the feeling like you have been there before or you did fight this opponent before, even if you never did. Reason number two, surprises. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes I go to the fight, I fight some opponent for the first time. Maybe it happened to you also. You get surprised by, for example, ah, he's faster than I thought, or he's physically stronger than I expected, or he has longer legs than I thought. So there are many things, when you don't visualize, you get surprised in the, in the day of the competition, for example. So, shadow sparring will help you to visualize this opponent, and when you go to the fights with him, you will have less chances to get surprised. Reason number three, correction of the mistakes. This point is very important. Imagine you finished a fight, your coach came to you and he said to you, listen, in this fight, I'm not very happy you did this mistake, this mistake, and this mistake. We're gonna need to correct them. No problem. We go back to training, shadow sparring. We visualize the scenarios when you did the mistakes. Together with your coach, you speak, you say, okay, how are we gonna correct it? How we can do better in these situations? And then you, together you correct the problem. You're gonna repeat the correction of the problem until you memorize it. And this will help you to don't do the same mistakes in the next fight. Reason number four, mental strength. You know, sometimes mentally you are tired of thinking in a fight, like you can't think of the tactical plan anymore, or simply you disconnect from, from the fight, like you think about something else, um, or your mind is tired, then sometimes it may cost you a, a headshot or points, or I don't know, uh, you may lose the fight, or you may be in the final, and you may be the champion or not, because your mind is getting tired. So in the shadow sparring, you can practice in this moment, for example. You have no one to kick you if you lose the connection, but you will recognize yourself. When you practice, your mind will go to somewhere else, or you will disconnect, or you will get tired of thinking. Then you can reset directly and think like, okay, now my mind is getting tired. I will keep going until the, uh, the, the end of the fight. So from the beginning to the end, if you can have the full focus in the shadow sparring, in the fight, it will help you a lot to be focused as much as possible. Reason number five, in general, it's a good workout. Shadow sparring, it's a good workout. You will improve on your skills, on your movement. You are moving, you are visualizing, you are burning calories. It's, it's, in general, it's a good workout. So there are a lot of benefits to practice Taekwondo shadow sparring. But the biggest question is how to do it correctly and effectively. I will tell you step by step. First thing to do is to plan the workout. Shadow sparring is not just go in the ring, movement, kicking, kicking, kicking until you get tired and then you stop. Absolutely not. It is very important to set up a plan, a time. For example, in this video, I will do one fight only, three times two minutes, one minute between each round. It's like a normal fight, official fight. You can do more fights, you can do less time, you can do more time, but it's very, very important to set up how many rounds you're gonna do, how many fights, and how long time you're gonna practice it. 
The second thing that you need to do is to choose one opponent in your mind. For example, someone who you want to beat in the national championships, for example. So you visualize him, you put him in front of you physically. You really need to feel when you practice the shadow sparring that he's in front of you. You really feel the distance. You smell him like you really need to feel it. It's very important. In my case, in the fight that I will do now in the shadow sparring, my opponent will be Lee Daihon, for example, even if I think he's retired. But I will choose him because he's one of the most difficult opponents that I did face. And yeah, when I fight him, it's always a spectacular fight. So I love fighting him. So after you choose an opponent, now you need to make a tactical plan. A plan to beat your opponent while using your best skills and not letting your opponent use his best skills. It may sound a little bit complicated, but it's not. I will explain you. In my case, for example, I'm fighting Lee dae -hoon. I will have to analyze few of my best skills and analyze his and make a tactical plan how to use my best skills in my favor to beat his best skills. I will give you an example. I have, for example, a good movement, good footwork. I can move very fast. Spin, movement, feint. Second, um, I have the ability to fight the new Taekwondo style and then to lead with my front leg, for example. Straight into it. Headshot attempt. Double. Which way the kicks are going to go for me? He goes up high. Achab twist kick. Achab trying to slow it down. His own twisting kick and scores. And then to throw sometimes old school combination with some doubles and triples. Self so be in there. Oh, look at that. Three kick triple. It's a good, it was a good call, nevertheless. Triple spins move through. And then another one, I will pick. Uh, I, I have good punches. Tries a big punch again, Morby. Big punch attempt. Achab moving forwards, goes to the punch again. I choose three of my best skills and then I will have to check and analyze the best uh, skills of my opponent. Ledai Hunden. It will be a little bit difficult because he has an amazing uh, abilities and qualities, but I will try to pick up some of them. So he has an um, amazing front leg. He can play and manipulate with his front leg. Amazing. And then the way Lee wants him to get under action. Ooh, he's so dangerous. Lee's got such speed and movement, but Achab seems to be able to counter it. Second, he's very dangerous with surprises back legs. Put a big punch. Caught. The third one I will pick up. He has an amazing stamina. Body shot and he's leaders his own twist kick there. Lee does so how can I put this information in the real situation now? I will use my shadow sparring. I will try to keep my movement, for example, to avoid his front leg and to disrupt him. I have to lead with my front leg as it's one of my best skills, for example. Sometimes surprises with old school combination. Whenever he comes with his back leg, I need to be ready either to avoid it or to counter it or to sit him up. This is a little bit too tactical, but I can set him up to use his best skill in my favor. So I set him up in some situation to use it in my favor. Um, and then, yeah, stamina, I have to manage good uh, match management for the energy. So this is a little bit the plan. It may be a little bit too complicated for some of you, but I try to keep it as simple as possible. So this is the plan. Ready to go. Let's put all of this in practice. I will do one fight to keep the video as short as possible. Three rounds of two minutes, one minute break between each round. Let's go.
Second round. Three points. Ah, 
Hacha, 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 hacha. Yes. Ah. Very important point. Whenever you finish the match, always finish by winning. Never finish by losing. Even if it's difficult, finish always by winning. And don't be scared to celebrate. You need to, to feel the sensation of the victory. It's very important. You will make yourself and your mind believe that you can. So it's very important to win on every fight, even if sparring visualization. And uh, yeah, I will be back. That was one fight of three rounds of two minutes, one minute break between each round is like a normal competition, but you can go up to two fights, three fights, whatever you want. And uh, yeah, I wanted to also to let you know that I don't know if you did pay attention, but I did make a new design of my t-shirts. Um, I hope you like it. I just ordered a few ones to show it to you and to know your opinion about it, if you like it. I may order some more for you guys. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. I really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, see you next one. Thank you, bye bye. A very important point to mention is please don't kick full power and don't kick full speed when you practice shadow sparring to avoid injuries. When you have a partner, you can kick him, he can kick you full speed, full power, no problem. But when you have no impact to kick on, you may get some injuries. So take it easy, movement, just knees is enough. For me, whenever I do shadow sparring, if I kick, I kick slow, for example, like this. If I want a fast movement, I just do with the knees. Like knee movement, it can be fast, no problem. But kicking, please, no full speed and no full power to avoid injuries. <laughs>